Rick Alderman, welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, let's let's get right to it. Uh, you you help people fix their bodies. Yes. Yeah, uh, I specialize in helping people with chronic or difficult pain issues. Right. And so I've, I've read a couple of your eBooks, and um, like the the main thing I'm getting from them is how everything is connected. It is. And uh, however, that's not how we're taught in school. So and, and in general medicine, uh, I, I describe it as a component approach to, to learning anatomy and physiology is we look at ever smaller and smaller things to understand the structures. Right. Mm. Uh, but and, and so in, in PT school and other other types of uh, you know, training, we look at you know, if you have elbow pain, this is what you do for elbow pain. If you have shoulder pain, this is what you do for shoulder pain or back pain. This is what you do for back pain. But there's not this uh, backing away and looking at, well, how does all this fit into the system? How does the whole system work that's causing that, sh that elbow, shoulder or back pain? It's all more just looking at those zones, treating the tissues that are, haven't been identified to be irritated and then done mm. kind of thing. Yeah. So let, let's let's explore that by finding out a little bit more about you and your background. Sure. Like, like what did you want to be when you were a kid? Well, uh, I wanted to be a grown up when I was a kid. <laughs> I lived on a farm and uh, you yeah, on, I made on it. A, on a I've farm, already you made my goals. Yeah, I grew up on a farm and, you know, we we just worked all the time. And I'm just like and I never got paid for any of the work that I did. So I was just like you know, I'm really looking forward to getting off this farm and uh, seeing what's going on in, in the world. And uh, where, where so, was that? Where was that? Fascinating. I was in Ohio. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, basically, and, but I've always had a, a an interest in mechanical things. So I would, you know, from an early age, I I, I remember one in particular. I, I fixed our our little toaster in our kitchen. Uh, mm -hmm. they threw my parents threw it out cause it was broken. I fished it out of the trash can and fixed it. And then I, that started to teach me about how things, how adult things work prior to there. Then I was just taking apart my toys. Uh -huh. and, and so this was the first time I got to take apart an adult appliance and said, so, and then it led on to you know, lawnmower engines and motorcycle engines and things like that. So, but then I started applying this, what I, the, the things I had learned in these, these concepts I'd learned. To the human body as well, and uh, it all applies. Mm -hmm. And what was your relationship with like your own body gr growing up? Were you an athlete? Were you, you know, a, I guess a farm worker has to be strong. Did you have like aches and pains from like hoeing and and, and pitching hay and stuff? Uh, no, I, I didn't. Uh, and I did play athletics, and I had a couple of semi serious injuries. Uh, you know, growing up. But then what happened uh, when I was in my 20s, I developed back pain. Mm. And uh, at that time, I was also volunteering at a physical therapy clinic. And, you know, growing up on a farm in Ohio, I'd never even heard of physical therapy. So basically, you just suck it up and whatever's going to heal is going to heal the way it's going to heal kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, I was just like, physical therapy, what's this? And so I was volunteering. I happened to have uh, a zinger in my back when I was volunteering there. One of the therapists noticed he treated me a couple of times, took my back pain away completely for about a week. And then it came back again. I'm just like, gosh, you know, I, I need to figure this out. So that's one of the things that drove me to get into PT school because mm. I thought, oh, well, I'm going to learn the insider secrets. What what's going on in here? And basically school is about understanding what structures are irritated and maybe how to treat those structures. But there's no, nothing that's really answering the why behind why the structures are irritated or damaged. Mm. And that's intuitively, I felt, well, gosh, if I understood why this was happening, I could solve this. And so that led me on this long journey of figuring all this out, which came from three different researchers in three different fields of medicine. Uh, and put, and they had all found three, the three patterns that cause almost all back pain. Uh, and they were the same three patterns, one in physical therapy, one in a, a fascia, uh, researcher, 
and then another in uh, neural tension and reflex patterning in the body. They all pointed to the same three patterns. So I'm just like, ding, ding, this can't be a coincidence. I've got to put all this together and synthesize it. And that's what I've done in my career as a physical therapist and then applied that. I owned a orthopedic sports and orthopedic clinic here in Denver, very successful. Uh, so I could test my theories in an orthopedic setting. Uh huh. So uh, in uh, 1990, I went to massage therapy school. And one of the things I remember I had to do was memorize the names of all the muscles and the bones. Yes. And um, it wasn't was, that fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I held on to it just until just as long as I had to for the test. And then, yeah. like, you know, there's only like a few, like the only ones I remember are the ones that have still caused me problems, you know, like QL and ASIS. Right. And, um, we can certainly it, talk about the, those are big things in terms of back and sciatic pain. So uh -huh. you want to go down that road. But what were you going to say? I'm sorry. Yeah, know. well, just just how reductionist it was. Um, yes. And I think I remember learning yeah. later about fascia and the and I, I don't know if this is true yeah. or not. But what I was taught was that the fat when people when anatomists were studying the human body, they just moved the fascia aside like cobwebs because it was getting in the way of the good stuff. And like, yes, people really weren't paying attention to like all these different layers and, and their and their function. Yeah. Right. You're exactly right. In cadaver lab, I mean. The first couple of weeks are just getting all the fascia out of the way, right? So you can see the structures that we're told to pay attention to. So, and and it is reductionist, and it, it needs to be to some degree, because you've got to learn these muscles, nerves, ligaments, bones. You've got to learn all of this. But what is what isn't taught, really, in my opinion, is the significance of the relationship of these structures, and mm. that's. That's one of the keys to understanding how to solve more difficult pain. And that's what I was missing when I graduated from PT school and have since learned and appreciated. Right. So, you know, I, I mentioned before we started recording and some of my listeners will know that I, you know, I blew out my left plantar fascia a um, couple months ago. And, the, you know, first thing everybody told me was like, get a boot, get on crutches. And I suppose that was probably good advice for the first few days, but People were saying, you know, you know, this is three months off, rest it. And it just didn't make any sense to me to to do that kind of rest. So I, I, I sought out some other folks um, and I was working with this one guy. I was visiting New York City and I worked and he took a look and he said, oh, well, I can see the problem. Um, you know, he said I kind of had like a sway back, like a military posture with a with my pelvis sort of tipped so that if it was a bowl, the, the water would be falling out the back. And he said, that's, mm -hmm. that's your, that's your plantar fascia pain right there. I'm like, I don't understand. That's nowhere near my, <laughs> like, didn't, yeah. <laughs> didn't you study that day? The plantar fascia is the bottom, bottom of my foot. This is my hips. And that's right. Of course, you know, he had me like doing some exercises that were sort of profound and how quickly uh, can you help me understand what happened, like what that was about and what happened and, and how the, how these things are connected? Because I, I, I know, you know, I took things apart as a kid and I never put them back together. So, I, yeah, I could use your help. <laughs> OK, yeah, sure. So uh, one of those researchers I, I was mess, uh, mentioning before was Thomas Myers, mm. and he is a fascia researcher. And he 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 identified that we have super highways of fascia running through our bodies that connect our heads to our toes and to the bottom of our feet. And so uh, these superhighways of fascia corresponded to uh, primary movement dysfunctions that another physical therapist researcher had discovered and these reflex patterns that uh, this other neurologically based researcher had discovered too. So what, so if, and this is what helped inform me that in order to solve something like back pain, Knowing that we are connected all the way to the top of our head, to the bottom of our feet, in the same line of s some tissues, it, it helped me look further away from the problem to understand what might be affecting that problem. So what they were doing is your plantar fascia, of, you're right, is on the bottom of your foot, right? But a lot, a lot of that, that is one line of fascia that is connecting that foot to the top of your head from the back of your body. So what that person was doing was reducing tension 
by changing your posture habits, reducing your tension up the chain of fascia, which relax the whole cop, the whole web series. And that's what helps relax your whole fascia system. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you felt pain at the weakest point of your fascia, mm. but you had other points along that whole fascia highway that were generating tension in the, and all the entire line. And so they were likely addressing those other tension points to remove tension in the weakest point. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Kind of like a, when you're making a bed, you can change the, the wrinkles by pulling on any of the corners, not just where the wrinkles are. You're exactly right. That's a great analogy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, and so, you know, so, so much of, uh, from what I've experienced and what I've heard is like people have chronic pain and they go and get a treatment and they feel better, but just like your story, a week later, it's worse again. So what's, what's that yes. about? Yeah, so this goes back to that idea of component thinking. So what's happening with that treatment is they are treating the component of the pain that hurts, the strained tissue, the disc bulge, a rotated vertebra, you know, something like that. And they're calming all of that down, but they're not solving the reason why that area is irritated. And usually the answer to solving that area's irritation lies in understanding how the, like you experienced, how the whole system is playing into that one area. That one area is saying, hey, this is my vulnerable spot, but I've got problems all the way up and down my chain that I need to fix that's making this spot scream a little mm -hmm. bit. So we've got to fix this other stuff that's contributing to it. Does that make sense? That's kind of how it works. Yeah, so if I get like a massage or someone just works on that, it can relax that temporarily or it, you know, it, it gets the neurons to overfire so they stop hurting, but it's not, it hasn't Correct. really addressed where the source of the dysfunction is. Yeah. And, and, and typically the source of dysfunction is how you're using your body. It's how you're walking. It's how you're standing. It's how you sit. It's how you bend over things like that, that you do every day. So your body. So I, it was interesting. I was listening to, your interview, it was with a, uh, a therapist. I can't remember her name Anne something. She just wrote a book and she talked about adaptations that we make when we're younger yeah, to Anna Gabriel, surviving. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly uh, what right. it was. And she talks about when we're younger, we make these adaptations in our body to get to negotiate our home life. Mm. Well, our brain makes those same adaptations. I call them compensations, but they can be called adaptations too, to minor injuries or difficulties that we're having with our body, old injuries that perhaps weren't rehab correctly. Like my case, growing up on the farm and just sucking it up, you know? Yeah, the pain goes away, but somehow my body has learned to compensate around that pain to make it go, help it go away. Right. And so these small compensations throughout your life then add up. And there's that one point where you're picking up that sock off the t off the floor and you throw your back out, you know, and, th and that's why is because your body's finally said, look, I can only compensate so much. We've got to go back and to this blueprint and change everything that my brain has taught me to do, you know, to get around all my various training, you know, lifestyle, exercise habits, you know, whatever, stress, trauma, all sorts of things are manifested in the body. And so we've got to change how you're how you've accomplished those compensations yeah, speak, it sounds speak. like it would be a long process but it would be it's actually quite fast well i'm, I'm glad to hear that because well, you know after reading your, um your book on foot and ankle pain um i mm. try there you have a bunch of, of uh, exercises to do and yeah. i have to admit i didn't i didn't do them in the same order that you recommended which was very instructive so I started, you know, sort of the, like the leg lift. So I'm on my hands and hands and knees and lifting yeah. the leg and I'm doing a good job. Like I'm feeling strong. And then you had another one where you yeah. sort of lie down uh, prone and then lift the leg. And I couldn't do mm -hmm. it. It's like right. like my ass is completely asleep turned off and I'm it turned off yes. and I'm doing all this stuff. And it made me realize like I've been I've been a, a, an ultra marathoner. I have run 30, mi 31 mile races. I've done up and down mountains yes. using the wrong muscles. And so like no wonder yeah. that, you know, like for me uphill, 
feels like hell. Hmm. But, and, you know, like much, much harder than I remember it used to feel. And I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I'm imagining that something about the gluteus being turned off and really not knowing how to like I'm, I'm lying there on the ground going, yo, yo, do it like, like, like there's no communication. Like, you know, so like it's a horror movie. Where's someone, my megaphone? So someone's <laughs> cut, you know, someone's cut the phone line. I'm like, hello, is right. anybody there? <laughs> yes, exactly. So what's what's yeah, what so, do I learn from that? Yeah. So I have two comments about that. For, first one is that the the foot pain book was written back in 2009, published, I think, in 2010. Hmm. That was before I purchased my orthopedic clinic. So I've gotten to see hundreds more foot issues than I did prior when I wrote that book. So I have streamlined that process significantly and changed how I've approached feet based on what I've learned in my clinic, seen hundreds more cases than what I had seen prior to writing that book. And that's found in my downloadable foot pain program. So, uh, so those, uh, I, I've updated that information because it's, it's very old, what you were looking at. Okay. So that's one thing. The second thing is, you mentioned earlier that uh, your therapist for your plantar fasciitis said that you had a sway back posture. Yeah. And that you're, and that you, it sounds like you were describing a posterior pelvic tilt, which is a pelvis that's kind of tucked underneath you a little bit. Right, right. Right? Right. Is that what you're describing? Okay. So uh, that posture strategy turns off butt muscles in and of itself. Hmm. It has nothing to do with your exercise. It has everything to do with how you're using your body. Okay. So uh, running up the hill should help you turn on that butt muscle. So if you're running up the hill and your butt muscle isn't turning on, then you're in a deeper hole of dysfunction than uh, what we really want to see happen. Mm. And so uh, what the, the difference between being on your elbows and doing the butt pump and being on your hands or I'm sorry, being on your stomach and doing that butt pump is showing that when we isolate your trunk and you have no other way to compensate to get that leg up in the air, you can't do it. You can't turn on the butt. Only if you are allowed to compensate in other ways, can you get that butt to turn on? Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. And it was, it was, you know, first I, I was, I had to like mixed feelings. One is like, Oh, like I'm really happy. Like I've discovered this important thing about myself. Right. And then I was lying yeah. there like, you know, like a fish on the sand. Like, now, what do I do? <laughs> like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is a double-edged sword. But what I always tell uh, my patients is, look, what you've just discovered is something that will help liberate you mm -hmm. from your problems. Yes, you're not as perfect as you thought you were, but now you can be if you just fix this little issue. Uh-huh. So... So let's talk a little bit about about uh, modalities of fixing, because since, you know, since I've discovered sure. sort of the holistic world, there are so many different people with so many different approaches. So, to, for, you know, for example, um, I do a Russian martial art called Sistema that believes in very, very painful fascia massage. You know, every, in fact, at the big conferences, they bring some guy over from Russia who like packs antlers in his suitcase. And he'll work on you literally with like reindeer antlers and people you know, yes. scream. And then they come out like bright eyed, like I've been liberated. Then there's something like melt method, which is sort of very sort of gentle. Uh -huh. Like, you know, if it hurts, you're doing it wrong. There's, you know, stretching like the kind, kind of like sort of yoga stretches with, with uh, bands and things. And then there's the idea that stretching is only irritating things because you're just going to snap back or like, I've just had for myself a real hard time navigating when there's so many different approaches out there. So how, how do you make sense yeah. of all those? Well, so uh, this is the beauty of the human body is that there are multiple avenues to get where you want to go. It's, it's both a blessing and a curse because remember what I talked about when you have old injuries, your brain figures out a way to compensate so that you can still get from A to B and do the things that you need to do. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you, you know, there's multitudes of ways that those compensations occur and therefore, and there are multitudes of types of tissues, uh, in your body, fascia, muscle, nervous tissue, uh, you know, bone, ligament, tendon, all sorts of different things. And so that means that there are 
a variety of, and as, as well as our brain being a stressor and tension generator in our system too, right? For stress, trauma, all that type of stuff. So there's all sorts of different ways to create trauma and tension in our body. And therefore there's all sorts of different, and because it, it, uh, tr- you know, it encompasses so many different types of tissues. That's why all of these modalities kind of work, right? But they, I feel that they kind of work mm-hmm. because I feel that if something really worked, you wouldn't have to go back every week to do it. Uh-huh. Or you wouldn't have to, you know, you wouldn't have to go back and, and undergo the antler treatment from this Russian guy, <laughs> right? Or, or the melt or whatever. So they, they all are effective for eliminating, again, that component uh, thinking pain of the immediate tension in the immediate area of your pain. But if you're having chronic issues, it means that you haven't solved how you're using your body to create those vulnerabilities that are occurring in your, in your system. So my general thought is, Hey, because a lot of therapies do great, uh, for, you know, simple sprains, strains, you know, Oh, I, I strained something on my last run or something like that. We're going to massage that out. And gosh, I, I felt better for, you know, years ever since that's exactly what I needed. Great. A lot of those modalities work for those simpler things, Mm -hmm. but when we're dealing with chronic or nagging pain, and if you can't get rid of it, it means you haven't addressed the system that's causing it yet. You've just been addressing components of it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So for yeah. people who are listening or watching, and I hope people will watch because I think we're going we're gonna to do a demo soon. But if someone's yeah. just you know listening to this, like, yeah, I've got chronic pain, what can they start doing on their own? You know, and we're going we're gonna to give your website and information about how people could get your sure. you know, downloadables yeah. and work with you. But for just someone who's like, OK, give me some insight here. What, 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 what can people I'll give them look something for? right now. OK, so the majority of people listening likely have back pain or sciatic pain or an SI joint issue or something like that. That's the most common pain complaint. So to understand, so I'm going to give you, your listeners, a little test to understand why they're having the back sciatic or SI joint pain. Okay. Mm, okay. And you can do this too, Howie, if you want to. So I'm going to ask your listeners, go ahead and lie down on the floor and it can be on the floor, on your couch, on your bed, just lie down with your legs straight. And I'm going to give you a couple minutes or a few seconds, not a couple minutes to get there. So get down on the floor, because if you just listen to what I'm saying, you won't feel the truth of your body. And so this is this is about feeling the truth rather than just, you know, intellectually understanding it. Uh huh. It's about truly knowing. So lying down, let's assume everyone is lying down on their backs now. All right. I'll go. Their do it. Legs I'll go are straight. Do it too. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. I don't need to see you. And so that's fine. Just listen to my voice and you don't need to see me either. So you can just go ahead and lie down and not even look at me if you want, Howie. All right. So everyone's now lying down on their backs with their legs straight. All right. And what I want you to do is just take a deep breath and I want you to uh, feel whatever tension your low back is having in this position. Is it a lot? Is it a little? Is it uncomfortable? Is it very comfortable? Okay, so we've been there for maybe 20, 30 seconds. Now what I want you to do is bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. And uh, if you prefer, you can actually hug your knees to your chest if that feels better for you. So what we're going to do is compare. Do I like my back? Does my back feel better when my knees are bent or when my legs are straight? And so if uh, most people listening will say, oh, gosh, when my knees are bent, my back feels so much better. So now I want you to straighten your legs again and feel what just happened to your low back. When your legs are straight, your low back arches more off the floor. Simple as that. When your knees are bent, your low back flattens towards the floor more. Can, can you feel that, Howie? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. You can stand up now. Okay. Okay. So Howie, in terms of your back pain, which felt better for you? Knees bent or legs straight? Knees bent. I, exactly. When I hugged, it was a little Nine. too much. And when it was straight, I, right. felt, I felt the arch. Right. And so 99% of your listeners will say the same thing. 
My back felt much better when my knees were bent, either to your chest or just feet flat on the floor, than when they were straight. What is that telling us? I'll bring out my trusty skeleton here. Okay. So what, what that's telling us, that they, and what you just discovered is when your legs are straight, your back is more arched. When your knees are bent, your back is flatter. It's that simple piece of information. This is called an extension problem. It means that your back is too much in extension or more likely there are too many forces trying to pull it into too much of an arch that you're unaware of. So it's not so much that your shape of your back is wrong. It's that you have uncontrolled or unidentified sources pulling it into more of an arch that are causing that back pain. And so we're going to, it looks like you're standing up. Is that right, Howie? Yep. Okay, so we're going to go into the second, one of the reasons this is happening and how your listeners can help themselves right now. Okay. Okay. So now, now that we know that part of your back pain, at least, is due to the fact that there's too much arch in it, and somehow you need to reduce that arch, we're going to introduce the second idea here. And Howie's already standing. You listeners, if you haven't been, please stand up and listen to this segment. All right. This is the second powerful thing that, I, that you're going to think that you're going to learn about your body. So how are you standing and are you equally weight bearing on both legs, Howie? Um, roughly. Roughly. Yeah. Okay. Now at, answer me this. Are your knees straight locked backwards or are they soft? They are not locked. Um, but they are straight. They're pretty straight. Yeah. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is unlock your knees. Soften them just a tiny bit. Okay. All right? Now feel what that just did to your low back. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't feel like it did anything to my back. Now go ahead and, and straighten your knees again. Can you feel how that just arched your back to straighten your knees? Yep. Okay, then unlock the knees again, and you'll feel how the arch goes away. Right. So just this one habit of starting to unlock your knees when you're standing and walking will take tremendous pressure off of your low back, especially for those who just identified that their back feels better when their back is flatter. Well, one of the things that's causing you to arch your back is the fact that you're locking your knees straight hmm. when you're standing and walking. So I had a collegiate swimmer, division one, top of the food chain, uh, come into my clinic recently. She had to quit swimming in college because she developed back pain so severe and none of, no one could figure it out. She came into my clinic 15 years later. Uh, she was in so much pain that if she sat down, she had to rest for 30 seconds for what, these waves of pain. She would shake, she was in so much pain. Hmm. Or if she stood up or whatever. She didn't even come in for back pain. She came in for plantar fasciitis because she had given up on solving her back pain. Hmm. And she was in so much pain, I couldn't even test her because everything would be positive for pain prov provocation, right? So, uh, so all I did, thankfully, I saw what the problem was when she walked to my table. She was locking her knees. So I taped the backs of her knees to get her to unlock them. Three days later, she came in 75% better hmm. with her back pain after 15 years of back pain. Also, her plantar fasciitis was... 75% better. All right. So when you understand how your system works, and this is what you experienced before when your therapist fixed your posture strategy, Howie, mm -hmm. with your sway back posture, and it helped your plantar fasciitis. This, by locking the knees, you're generating tension in that back line of, of function. And by unlocking the knees, you're reducing that tension. All right. Simple as that. And for her, that just unlock the knees was a meaningful enough change in her low back stressor and her plantar fasciitis stressors mm -hmm. that she felt 75% better. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's how it all works. So let me tell you what I'm experiencing is with, with the, like, I don't, I'm not quite sure, like, how much unlocking to do, much. but even a little bit, now I'm starting to feel pressure on the, 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 um, the front of the Lots. hips. Yes. Like they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're being asked to work and they don't like it. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. What, so anyone who came to my clinic who had back pain, hip pain, knee pain, foot pain, everyone learned how to walk correctly. And that was the number one comment from people is like, 
gosh, walking this way makes my thighs tired. Well, that's because when you lock your knees, you're turning off your thigh muscles and you're just standing on joints. And so unlocking the knees forces you to use your thigh muscles. I mean, look how large they are. They're massive muscles and your butt muscles that have chronically turned off for you in particular. Right. So it forces them. It gives them an environment in which they can function more readily and therefore disperse stresses throughout your lower body and back. Got it. So this so this um, sort of ache is a good sign. It's the, the, yes. the muscles. St- I, I would say I would say so. I would rather have your thighs feel tired from ache from using them than your back feel painful from locking your knees. Right. That's an acceptable kind of pain because you, it's like a workout kind of thing. Like, oh, gosh, I'm really getting tired. To keep my knees unlocked. Uh-huh. Right. That's because you're not used to using your legs. You're too used to standing on your joints, which then is hurting your back. Right. Simple as that. So when you said you taped her knee, so like I'm imagining for myself, like if, if this is how I've stood for my whole life, it's going to take a while to to reprogram. Is the is the taping to just, just a reminder or is it a? Yes. So the tape I use is uh, I don't want to geek out too much, but it's it's cover roll stretch and Luco tape. P. It is not the kinesio tape that you see all over everywhere. Yeah. Kinesio tape isn't a strong enough reminder. And you're exactly right. Uh, That's all this is doing is reminding you. So what it does is when you lock your knees, the tape pulls on your skin and it says you're locking your knees. And so you unlock your knees again, Uh right? So no, it doesn't take a long time. About usually for most people, three days. In three days, they will have changed that whole bad pattern of movement. And most people, if you have back or sciatic pain, most people will feel a lot better just with that small change. Hmm. Gotcha. So for folks yeah. uh, who want to tape their knees, is there a, do you have a program where you show people how to do that or can they go to someone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's in my... So all of the taping techniques I discuss are developed by me to solve systems problems. They're not the same type of taping techniques uh, that you've probably tried before. I can guarantee it. So they're all the taping techniques that you need to solve problems are in my downloadable home programs. So and if you go to fixingyoumethod.com, you can download. I've got a back pain, a hip pain, a knee pain, a foot pain, a neck pain and headaches, which fixes shoulder issues, too. And so. And if your listeners type in fixing you, all one word, F-I-X-I-N-G-Y-O-U, they can get a 20% discount on their purchase. Okay. So every one of those. So I've broken those programs down into there's a pain reduction phase. And these are the exercises that decrease pain. But if you remember, we've also got to fix how you're using your body. So there's also a changing habits video that outlines the, the, the habits and how to change them that you need to do. And then in the extra help video is where you'll find the taping recommendations to tape and support your body. So the tape creates a bridge of function and it will should almost immediately take almost all or most of your pain away if what you just taped was the was a big source of your pain. So the taping can be really educational in terms of Oh, gosh, when I tape the back of my knees, my back feels 50 percent better. That means locking your knees is a big deal for your back pain. Mm-hmm. If you tape the back of your knees and your back felt 10 percent better, then I would move on to something else instead of taping the backs of the knees as the source that's feeding that that back issue. That's kind of how it works. Gotcha. So when when we discover that, you know, my thighs aren't working or my butt isn't working, um, yeah. the approach that I have seen with like you know, the, the uh, trainers at the gym is, OK, let's strengthen that muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, so- it sounds like what you're doing is putting the body in positions where that muscle is going to be naturally strengthened by life. Correct. Um, Just think about, you know, let's say you go to the gym for an hour and you do your butt strengthening exercises. Now what? You go about the rest of your day. How, how much during the day are you standing and walking? Hours upon hours, right? So doesn't it make more sense 
to get hours upon hours of activation of these key muscle groups than just that half hour or hour in the gym. And by the way, doing the butt strengthening in the gym, if you're not fixing how you're using your butt in your daily life outside of the gym, then you're just wasting your time. Hmm. Yes, you're getting a strong butt, but if you're not using the butt, what good is it? Uh huh. Gotcha. Um, so, so let's let me talk a little bit about how do how do we start changing our habits? Yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, it's about identifying. This is the thing: is that be, because most practitioners don't look at the body from a system standpoint. Most people aren't aware of not only what habits are causing their pain, but how they're causing the pain and what to do about them. And so that's what a lot of my books are about. But I've updated that information in those downloadable home programs I was mentioning earlier. So in that changing habits video that I created for each of the programs shows you exactly how to change those habits. But the, the first thing Often what happens is I'll, I'll have people put little reminders on them. For instance, do you wear a watch, Howie? Rarely. Okay. So if someone wears a watch, usually it's on the left wrist because they're right-handed. Yeah. So I, I say, hey, put that watch on your right wrist. Mm. If they don't wear a watch, I say, hey, put a rubber band on your right wrist okay. or wear a bracelet. If you wear rings, then put a ring on a different finger or a different hand. So these will constantly annoy you. Mm. <laughs> and so they are your reminders to, to check in like, oh, I'm wearing this stupid thing because I've got to unlock my knees, right? Or I've got to do this thing with my sitting habits to change that stress to my hip and my back. Or, you know, okay, I'm going to walk differently. Okay, now that I'm paying attention to this, this thing on my wrist. Mm -hmm. So all they are, we need reminders because our brain has adopted these habits unconsciously. And if we leave it up to your conscious brain to remember often enough, I mean, every time you get distracted and look at something else, I mean, we live in a world of distractions. You're going to forget about how to change those habits. So these little external reminders will get you to make that transition. And it usually just takes a few days or a week to completely change your gait pattern. Right. And once it's changed and you, your brain has that locked in, you don't have to wear this little reminder anymore. Because now your brain has adopted that and you've got that one done. Uh huh. First all right, of all, I, so I just love that's what it takes. I love philosophically the idea of using things that annoy you to help you improve. Like yes. I just, I, you know, I'm extending yeah. that far beyond rubber bands on my wrist. I'm like every time I get that email <laughs> from that person, I'm like, oh, OK. Yeah, there you go. You can use your spam email as a as a vehicle to fix your body right okay every time i see my spam email i'm gonna check on my posture right or or something like that wow so i feel like we've yeah. i feel like we've just unlocked enlightenment well uh thank you i i, I hope so <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really works and this is this is gets down to the where the rubber hits the road with the human body and function you know and that's why i made everyone do that test because, yes, you can hear these ideas and say, oh, that's really interesting. But if you don't do it and feel it in your body and feel what that change does for you, you'll never truly adopt the changes. And this is what I, I was just talking with a, a PT yesterday. He said, yeah, but how do you get people to do what you're asking them to do? I mean, don't you run into problems? And I always say, no, I never run into problems because people feel better when they do it. If, if people don't feel better, then they, then they won't do what you ask them to do. But everything I ask people to do, because I, I always do a test retest, like that little test on the, on the floor. Does your back feel better flat or arched? It feels better flat. Okay, well then, does your back feel better with your knees soft or locked? It feels better with my knees soft. Well, why wouldn't you then do that? Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you've already seen that it helps you. So, and that's the, uh, one of the things that's wrong with a lot of, I think, exercises that people receive is that they're just throwing exercises like you were talking about. You go to the gym and you do a, a, you know, a butt series of exercises, but no one's ever taught you how to walk. So, and those butt exercises, while strengthening your butt, aren't going to help your pain. So then gradually you're going to stop doing them. 
rightly so, because they're not doing anything for your pain. So that's the key. Gotcha. Gotcha. Are you game for using me as a as a demo? Of course. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. I, uh, I discovered that my, my program doesn't allow me to switch cameras, so I'm going to have to move this. No worries. What are we, uh, are we going to look at your foot or are we going to look at your back? Um, I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I'm curious about your back. Okay. Uh, because we found that that is a key culprit in your book, in your foot. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? So let's just look at a broad, um, broad idea of what your back. Do you feel comfortable taking your shirt off in front of your listeners? Uh, as, long as, as long as they're listeners and not viewers, sure. But, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be okay, better. and and we're only going to be looking at the back of you, Howie. So it'll be the good side. Okay, the good side. <laughs> um, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, everyone, if you're watching, that scoot to your left just a little bit, Howie. Okay, let me ask you this, Howie. Was your plantar fasciitis on your left foot? Yeah. Well, so, okay. so I had plantar fasciitis on my right foot like three three years ago, and, uh -huh. and but I had the rupture on my left foot. So it's the left foot that's right Yes, now. yes. So I, I can see part of the reason. So all, all your viewers, if you're watching this video right now, can you all see that there's a larger crease on Howie's left, uh, move your left elbow. Howie, so people know. So that's his left side. You see that big crease on the left waist? And see how that crease doesn't exist on the right waist? Howie has a left side bending problem. All right, and that means, and I can show you on the skeleton, but that means that you have a, a pelvis that's higher on that left side, as well as a rib cage that's lower. And just go ahead and just stay there for a second, Howie. Okay. Uh, let your arms be relaxed. There we go. And so everyone can also see that Howie has some left shoulder blade issues too, because uh, there's a bigger divot in that left shoulder blade than there is on the right. Okay. Now let me ask you this, Howie. Uh, you are right-handed, correct? Left-handed. Left so do you have left shoulder pain or left neck issues? I have lots of neck issues. They, they feel 360. <laughs> okay. So your, your viewers can see that your right shoulder is sitting lower than your left. The right, the shoulder that's lower, it's normal to have one shoulder lower than the other. And it's almost always the dominant arm. When it's the non-dominant arm, then we have problems. So, uh, the right, uh, so I, I guess my question was, uh, do you have right shoulder issues? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So the right shoulder blade isn't, isn't resting well, but let's go back down to the back and the pelvis. Let me ask you this now, Howie, are you standing on one leg more than the other? Um, you know, as I look, I'm actually, um, about a, a quarter inch higher on the left because of a carpet. So, so can you still see me if I go here? Yeah. yeah. So and see, even though he stepped off that, feels equally weight bearing now. Roughly, yeah, as best I can tell. Yeah, it looks better to me. So even though you stepped off that high carpet on your left side, the left crease still stays there. Okay. All right. So now let's have you turn towards the camera. You can put your shirt on, and we're going to look at your legs a little bit. Okay. And so now lift your left knee just to make sure we're all on the same page. Good. Now lower that again. So everyone, can you see how Howie's right lower leg bows to the outside? That's what it looks like to me. And it looks like the right knee rotates inward excessively, or at least more than the left. All right. Your left leg also bows to the outside, but it doesn't look like it's nearly as much as the right side. So if everyone can just look at that, I don't know if you can see yourself on the screen, Howie, can you see that too? Not really, but I know, I know that, you know, okay. people, people, my parents okay. used to say I could open an umbrella between my legs with my feet together. Right, right. So now uh, let's ask you this, Howie. So I want you to assess how your lower body feels standing the way you're standing right now. Okay. And now what I'd like you to do is rotate your feet to the outside, your toes, 
just maybe three degrees or five degrees. All right. I want you to stand there. And I want, remember how we talked about your knee locking? Is it easier to keep your knees softer in this position or with your feet pointed forward? This way, it's much easier. Exactly. Exactly. So also, now that you've st stood there for a second, point your feet forward the way they were when you originally stood there. Can you feel how much effort it's taking for you to keep those toes pointed forward? Yeah, the outsides of the, the front of the calf. Right. And the insides and the insides. And so turn the feet out again and you'll feel that your legs get to relax a little bit mm. more now. You feel that difference? Uh -huh. Okay, back to forward again. Point to, and, and just make sure you feel where that tension is coming from. It's coming through the pelvis and the upper legs. <clears throat> but what it's doing is playing out in the feet too. So what you're showing us, I'm so glad that we looked at this. You have a socialized idea of how your feet should be pointing when you're standing, which is forward, straight forward. But you have what are called two retroverted femurs, which means the thigh bones are rotated to the outside. And so your feet are not aligned with the shape of your thigh bones. This is why you feel more tension when you point your feet forward because you're forcing your thigh bones into an internal rotation position that they don't like uh -huh. and your muscles. So if you point your feet to the outside, go ahead and do that again. And you can go as far out to the outside. You'll have to figure out the exact degree that you really like, right? But you'll feel that all that tension melts away in your lower body system. Right. When you point the feet according to how your thigh bones are shaped. All right. So here's the consequence for that in your plantar fascia. You'll feel that when your feet are pointed out to the outside, your feet are more relaxed and your arches are not quite as high as normal. And if you're not sure about that, point your feet forward again, and you'll feel that your arches lift a little bit off the floor and your feet roll to the outside. Yeah. Can you feel that difference? Yeah. So that's how the th shape of the thigh bone, together with how you've decided to stand and walk, play into the foot. When things are more relaxed in the body, the body's happier. Mm -hmm. When there's tension in our system, the body gets grumpy and starts complaining. So Howie, this change alone might completely take care of all your future plantar fasciitis issues because now your system is more relaxed. This is actually how you should be running too. Really? That's a, with that's a little bit of ask. external running. And yeah. With also. a little bit of external rotation with just a little bit of external rotation in your feet, because now your system. Okay. So let's, let's break this down. We talked about the butt muscles in the beginning of, and how they get turned off in you. Right? right. And we learned that when you lock your knees, your butt muscles turn off and your back arches. And now we've learned that when you point your feet straight ahead, it locks your knees more, right? Which then is contributing to turning off your butt muscles and causing your back to arch. This is a system solution to understanding your body. Does that make sense? It does. It does. So we're looking at, we're looking at everything, everything. We look at everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's and that's I'm, it. Could be as simple as that. I'm, 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 you know, it's remarkable how much I have been socialized to think that this is not the right way yes. to stand, and especially yes. in terms of running. When I see people running with right. their feet out, I'm, I'm judging them. I'm like, that's inefficient. Yes, you should be moving straight ahead. Yes. So that's one of the most common comments I hear in the clinic is when I ask people to turn their feet out, and it's usually guys because guys typically have more retroversion or rotated outward thigh bones than females. Females have the opposite problem. Their thigh bones are typically rotated in. Mm. But when I tell guys, hey, you got to you turn your feet out, and they, they say, oh, you mean i got to walk like a duck? Yeah. So we've, we've developed this social, it's like this socialized approach to walking that has nothing to do with how our bodies are built, and it's based solely on judging from an aesthetic standpoint rather than a functional standpoint. 
So your, your brain has learned to ignore the signals your body is trying to give you that we just discovered right now, this increased tension, all this kind of stuff. Your brain has ignored that because the message from the socialization has been so strong that you've just overridden all of those messages. Makes sense. Makes sense. How, how, did, okay. how does this so, uh, connect with what you first noticed about the... Uh, yes, the, 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 the back. back. So we're going into that right now. What's going on with you? This is the left side of the spine here. This is the back of, our, of the body. So what is happening with you is that your left hip or uh, pelvic bone is higher than the right side. And your left rib cage is lower than the right side. And so what that's doing is creating, you can imagine, increased compression on this whole left side of your spine. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned earlier the QL. For those who aren't aware of it, the QL muscle runs from the pelvis to here, like this. All right. So if you're walking around like this, then the QL is either contracted or has become shortened as a result or is contributing to that pattern. But that's not where the problem is. But anyway, what is what has resulted in this, it tells me that this is pattern has been going on a long time with you because even when you're standing on level ground, the crease is still there. Mm -hmm. All right. So when people have gotten to the point where they've developed a bigger crease on one side than the other, it means that that has been a long adaptation. Okay. Okay. So why is that happening? And this is why I asked if your plantar fasciitis was on your left side, because when your body experiences pain, say on one side of the body, like let's say we step on attack with this foot, right? The body's response is their withdrawal reflex to get off of that. Okay. And so if you have chronic issues in this left side, your body over time is going to gradually just hold on to that withdrawal response mm. and just li and, and then you just live with it because it's trying to get you off the painful thing that you're ignoring. Okay. Okay. This is your brain's way of dealing with a problem so that you don't have to think about it. It's going to make the changes for you so you can do what you need to do, get from A to B. But all of these things add up, right? So your, your body remembers. And even let's say that you fix that plantar fascia issue on their foot. Well, your brain keeps thinking it needs to do this huh. because that's what it's learned to do for the past X number of years. So it's going to hold on to that, even though this is solved. Hmm. So this is the beauty of understanding things from a system standpoint. You can easily solve all of these things with like the small changes that you and I just did in our talk today, unlocking the knees, turning the feet out, right? All of those things will get the butt to turn on. When the butt turns on, it's going to control the pelvis better. When it controls the pelvis better, it's going to start to uh, fix the back issue here. Huh. Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm struck by the, I don't know if it's a metaphor or a sort of a universal truth as you, you were talking about Anna Gabriel Mann and adaptation, but like the work I yes. do with people around habits that they can't let go of is exactly the same. It's the brain yeah. has a strategy of avoidance that works in the short term, and it's never going to let go of it on its own. So even, even though the thing you're avoiding might have been, you know, your relationship with an abusive parent, and now you're an adult, your parents might be dead, you're in a loving relationship with someone else, your brain is still doing all those avoidant behaviors. Yes. So I was working with a patient one time, uh, and I was working on his inner thigh muscle. And his inner thigh muscle, you know, I, I've relaxed it, but it kept getting re tight again. And I fixed his gait pattern. I fixed all the reasons mechanically this should be happening. So I, I just, abs you know, sometimes I say these things half wondering what my patients are going to say, but a lot of times just talking to myself, hey, why is this muscle keep turning on? And he turned to me and he said, do you think it had anything to do with my dad leaving me when I was eight? Hmm. Right. Then he started crying. Yeah. The body knows, right? It does. Right.
Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 and after he said that, that inner thigh never was tight again. Mm -hmm. So that was his brain's way of finding a way to cope with this trauma. It's for some reason, and it could have been from a, some movement pattern he had when he was eight, but for some reason it set up shop in that inner thigh muscle. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. So, um, yeah, this has been amazing. We're roughly at the, at the end of the hour. Uh, I wonder, if, I wonder if I can come see you tomorrow. I've enjoyed myself. I'm, I have a day in, uh, in Denver before the <laughs> tournament starts. I feel like there's a lot more work I need to do. Well, you know, thankfully, uh, Howie, it's as simple as what you and I just talked about. Yeah. You, if you fix unlocking the knee, turning the feet out, it's going to get your system working the way it should. It's that simple. So what I would say instead, save your money. Okay. Try these simple changes uh -huh. and email me and let, let me know how they've gone for you. OK, I, I will do right? that. And we're probably not going to publish for a couple of weeks. So I will have mm -hmm. feedback to share yeah. uh, in the introduction yeah. of this conversation. Right. Um, but Good. let's make sure people know how to get in touch with you. So if you could say, say your website slowly, sure. spell it out so people have, are, are clear right. where to go. OK, so uh, if people are interested in getting my downloadable home programs to solve their pain and I recommend them above my books because these are more current and are based on my clinical experience for the last 10 years, uh, they can go to fixing you method. That's F-I-X-I-N-G-Y-O-U-M-E-T-H-O-D dot com fixing you method. And if you type in fixing you all one word. You can get a 20% discount on on those downloadable pro products, whatever you buy. Uh, I, I've also developed an online course. If any of you are health or wellness or, or coaches or personal trainers or physical therapists or chiropractors or doctors out there who want to learn this way of looking at the body, uh, which will, I, I'm telling you, you will see huge changes in your patient's pain when you do. You can go to healpatientsfaster.com. And type in that same fixing you code and you can get 20% off uh, that too to learn the system of understanding the body. And if all of that is confusing, everything can be found at my Rick Olderman website. So www.rickolderman.com where I also have a few freebies for people if they, if they want or my blog and patient stories and things like that too. Awesome. And the, uh, the, the course, the online course, healing patient, heal patients faster.com. Um, does somebody, yes. should somebody already be a PT or have, like, is there a, a floor of knowledge that someone should yeah. have or could a, could a regular old coach like no. me benefit from that? Yes. I, I'll tell you, if you work with the human body, you, I mean, you've seen it just today, Howie, anyone, the things I'm recommending are simple, but you have to understand what they are. Right. And so I feel that anyone who works with the human body in whatever capacity, a coach, trainer, yoga, Pilates, massage, whoever, right, can use this information because most people with pain come to people like you first rather than people like me first. Mm -hmm. And I they come to the personal trainer, the yoga instructor or, or whomever, right? Hey, I'm having this problem. So what if all of that, those people understood how we really work? to create and solve pain, we could get rid of chronic pain if it were nipped in the bud, you know, before it stay, sticks around for three months or three years or 30 years or whatever. So it's appropriate for anybody who works with the human body who's interested in helping people with pain. Gotcha, gotcha. There's one, one more thing I want yeah. to check. Just, I think I know the answer, but I just want to hear you say it. Someone who's sure, watching yeah. and listening shouldn't just assume that what worked for me will work for them. Right. That not everyone Correct. is going to you know, solve their problems by bending their by unlocking their knees and turning their feet out. Well, turning the feet out, maybe not. But as, if you're a guy and you notice that your body does feel relaxed with your feet slightly turned out, that will probably work. OK. For you. All right. So regarding the back stuff that we did, yes, it will work. If, if you tested that back and you found that your back hurts more when it's arched, and felt better when your knees were bent, then unlocking the knees will work for everyone. Gotcha. 
regardless of what type of back pain you have. This is the thing, Howie, is that, you know, if you have these patterns in you, it might it might manifest as low back pain in another person. It might manifest as sciatic pain and still another. It might be SI joint mm -hmm. pain, depending on your history and your body yeah. types. It's the same way around the, the work I do around nutrition, where like yes. the same diet can cause diabetes or gastroenteritis or right. heart disease or cancer. But there's 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 one dysfunctional root cause. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, this has been amazing. Um, and the other thing I'm feeling is as I as I feel into this new posture, it uh -huh. it feels um, more vulnerable, more open. And I feel like like the, the posture I had was a kind of a an armoring. Mm. Right? Just like your, your client who talked about his, you know, his father leaving and having to to muscle through. Like, I don't know exactly yeah. what my muscle through experiences have been, but this already feels softer, looser, more giving and, and a more I feel, already feel like more flow, like a, like more of a way. My body's more of a wave than than a rigid soldier. What you're feeling is your body becoming engaged in a way it's supposed to. And the way that you were using it before, it, you were forcing it to become disengaged. Mm -hmm. And so you'll feel things turning on and other things turning off and you'll feel differences in how you how you use your body when you use it better. And I like that. I like your description of flow. I mean, yes, because you're integrating everything to do whatever you're doing and you're integrating it correctly rather than a small piece might be correct and the rest of it isn't. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I definitely feel it. So Rick Alderman, thank yeah, you. Good. Thank you so much. First of all, th thank you for fixing My me. My pleasure. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for taking the time today and for all the work you do to, oh, yeah. uh, to help people heal everywhere. Thank you, Howie. Uh, thank you for having me on. It's great to meet your whole audience and you as well. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how this goes. Um, Please. I think I'll, I'll, I'll watch the taping stuff. And uh, so make, yes. make sure I keep I keep the reminders going. And so fixing you yeah. method dot com uh, coupon code fixing you. Um, and hopefully we'll get a lot of people uh, saying goodbye to their pain. I that's the way it should be. That's the body's natural way to be. Awesome. Rick, thank you so much. My pleasure, Howie. Thank you. Have a Thanks great too. day.